It's the year 1977, and astronomers are stunned. They've just picked up a bizarre and really powerful radio signal coming from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. The signal shockingly matches the frequency of neutral hydrogen. What's the big deal? This is the very frequency many astronomers believe might be used by extraterrestrial civilizations trying to communicate. Since then, the signal has become legendary in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, aka SETI, community. But what exactly was that mysterious signal? To understand this, let's go back to the 1970s when the Ohio State University Big Ear Radio Telescope was active. For more than two decades, from 1973 to 1995, it played a major role in the university's SETI program. By the way, it was the longest running SETI project in history. And in 1977, Big Ear detected something extraordinary, the WOW signal. This wasn't just any signal. It was a strong narrowband radio signal right near the important neutral hydrogen frequency. The Big Ear telescope might be gone now, but the mystery of the WOW signal still fascinates scientists today. Imagine this. You want to tell an extraterrestrial civilization about humans. How would you describe our average height? We can't use feet or inches because these units mean nothing to them. Even here on Earth, we don't all use the same measurements. To communicate with other civilizations, we need a universal way of conveying information. Luckily, the emission of light by matter comes from an electron jumping between quantum states in an atom. This process, governed by quantum mechanics, results in specific and fixed radiation frequencies and wavelengths no matter where you are in the universe. Since we believe the laws of physics are the same everywhere, these wavelengths are universal. This makes them a perfect standard of measurement that any civilization could understand. For example, on the Pioneer spacecraft's gold plaque, we used a particular wavelength as a unit of length to describe information about humans and the spacecraft's origin. So, if an extraterrestrial civilization wanted to talk to us, they could have used the frequency of the WOW signal. And that's pretty amazing. The signal lasted the entire 72 seconds that Big Ear was tuned in. A few days later, astronomer Jerry R. Amon was looking over the data when he spotted the unusual signal on a computer printout. He was so surprised that he wrote WOW next to it, and that's how the signal got its famous name. The signal also has another, not so exciting name, 6EQJ5. Some people thought it might be a hidden message, but it actually just shows how the signal's intensity changed over time. The WOW signal sparked all kinds of theories. Some people believed it was a sign of extraterrestrial life, while others were sure that it was some interference from human activities. There were those who believed it could be a natural phenomenon we didn't understand yet. New research seems to have finally solved the mystery, but there's one thing we'll talk about a bit later. First, let's get into detail. A team of scientists, led by Abel Mendez from the Planetary Habitability Laboratory at the University of Puerto Rico at Arecibo, revisited the mystery using data from the now-closed Arecibo Radio Telescope, collected between 2017 and 2020. These observations were similar to those made by Big Ear, but they had better sensitivity, resolution, and polarization measurements. Arecibo detected signals similar to the WOW signal, but there were some important differences. These signals were less intense and came from multiple locations, the scientists believe that these signals, including the original WOW signal, can be explained by natural events in space. Their theory sounds like this. The WOW signal was likely caused by a sudden brightening of hydrogen due to a strong, short-lived radiation source. It could be a magnetar flare or a soft gamma repeater, SGR. A magnetar is a neutron star with a way stronger magnetic field than ordinary neutron stars. And an SGR is an astronomical object which emits large bursts of gamma rays and X-rays at irregular intervals. In any case, such events are pretty rare and depend on very specific conditions. But they can cause hydrogen clouds to light up for short periods. According to the researchers, 
What Big Ear picked up in 1977 was one of those bright hydrogen clouds in its line of sight. The study suggests that the signal's rarity can be explained by the precise alignment needed between the radiation source, the hydrogen cloud, and the observer. It means that the WOW signal may actually be the first recorded instance of an astronomical maser flare in the hydrogen line. In the middle of the previous century, flying saucers were constantly making headlines. America was going through a surge of reported UFO sightings. So, it shouldn't probably come as a surprise that the American authorities, namely the U.S. Air Force, created a couple of short-lived programs. Those were Project Sign and Project Grudge, and their main goal was to look into that phenomenon. These programs were followed by likely the most famous of them all, Project Blue Book. It was a large-scale government study that lasted from 1951 to 1969. The initiator of this program was Major General Charles P. Cabell. He was a former intelligence director of the Air Force. Project Blue Book scrupulously gathered over 12,600 reports about people seeing bizarre unidentified objects in the sky. After thorough research, it was determined that most of those had natural, quite mundane explanations. As for the rest of the reports, the members of Project Blue Book simply didn't have enough data to evaluate them. That's why support for their efforts dwindled. Officially, Project Blue Book was closed in December 1969. But apparently, it didn't make American authorities lose interest in UFO sightings. Because in mid-December 2017, the world found out that they had secretly launched one more UFO research program in the late 2000s. Accordingly to certain documents, American authorities spent around $22 million over a four-year span on a project called the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, aka AADIP. This project was started in 2007, and its main goal was to study UFO phenomena. Most likely, all this activity was triggered by the 2004 Tic Tac incident. That's when a few U.S. Air Force pilots spotted unidentified flying objects off the coast of California. They captured them on video. None of the pilots could figure out what these objects were. They behaved in a weird way, as if our laws of physics didn't apply to them. They were reportedly flying extremely fast and rotating in unpredictable movements. It looks as if after that incident, American authorities decided to investigate whether those objects could be identified or not. And if not, they were eager to know where they had come from and if they had been a threat. When the New York Times story about the new project broke, officials announced that the study had been terminated in 2012. Uh, however, there were people who claimed that the program was still ongoing. One of those was a military intelligence official running the program until they quit in October 2016. In any case, let's have a closer look at this mysterious program. Indeed, the areas of research funded by the project resembled things you could find in Star Trek. For example, one grant was for the study of traversable wormholes, stargates, and negative energy. This study was conducted by Eric W. Davis of EarthTech International Inc. Another grant sponsored the research of invisibility cloaking. One more area of study included warp drive, dark energy, and the manipulation of extra dimensions. This research was conducted by a theoretical physicist and director of the nonprofit Icarus Interstellar. As we've already mentioned, all these studies received at least $22 million of funding, but this sum could have been much bigger. No one has revealed why or how these studies were given such huge grants under the AATI program. The results of the study aren't known publicly either. The criteria for choosing these fields of research could be that warp drives and stargates might be useful for extraterrestrial civilizations traveling interstellar distances to visit our planet. Still, some people are not amused that such questionable fields of study were receiving substantial government funding.